We're going to begin our study of limits by looking at functions as x approaches infinity. Now many textbooks start with limits as x approaches a finite value. But I think it's a lot clearer to students if we first talk about infinity, and that's because limits as x approaches infinity are very similar to horizontal asymptotes. And you've already studied horizontal asymptotes. So for example, this function here, I'm going to say that's, uh, let's work in black. It says f of x, let's call this 1 over x, the hyperbola. Now as you know from pre-calc, that has a horizontal asymptote right at at y equals 0. And when we use the language of limits, in a sense all we're doing is making that statement a little bit more precise with a new notation. What we'll say is the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x is 0. Now one thing that uh, is a little bit different between limits and asymptotes is that <clears throat> most of you were taught in pre-calculus that an asymptote was something that a function approaches but never actually touches. Well that's no longer necessarily true and we'll see why in the next case. So here I have a second function. This function is f of x equals 2. Again, it's not a very interesting function, but it certainly passes the vertical line test and uh, it qualifies in all other respects as a function. We're going to write, therefore, that the limit as x approaches infinity of the 2 function is just plain 2. And so right here you start to see why it is that the limit properly defined is just slightly different than a horizontal asymptote. And that is this function most definitely touches y equals 2. It's not that it gradually approaches it, it always was y equals 2. So let's just make a couple of observations from what we've seen here. First, as I said, when we write limit as x approaches infinity, okay, we say that it's almost the same. as a horizontal asymptote. And the reason that it's different is it's okay for the, for the function to actually touch the limit, whereas we were taught that it's not okay for a function to touch the horizontal asymptote. It doesn't have to touch it, but it's okay if it does. Second observation. When we say the limit as x approaches infinity, that's really bad notation. Because if you think about it, infinity is not a fixed value that you can get closer and closer to. So x doesn't really approach infinity. What we mean is as we go farther and farther away from the origin in a positive direction. But unfortunately, this is the notation that we're stuck with. So you're just going to have to mark that down as bad notation that the mathematics community has adopted. And you'll just need to remember that even though we say the limit as x approaches infinity, what we really mean is that we're going farther and farther away from the origin in a positive direction. So we've given a couple of examples 
of limit as a function, limit of a function as x approaches infinity. We've talked about it, how it's similar but slightly different from a horizontal asymptote. Let's see if we now can't come up with a definition of what a limit is. So we want to know the definition of the limit of f of x as x approaches infinity. And this is something that people spent a great deal of time thinking about before they got it right. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that the seminal breakthroughs in calculus occurred sometime around the 1660s. And it took another 200 years until the late 1800s before mathematicians were finally satisfied that they had a very precise definition of limit. So I guess I should say, what is the precise definition of limit of f of x as x approaches infinity? Well, it turns out to not be all that complicated. Uh, just a way of describing it in words is to say that if I can get x far enough away from the origin so that f of x gets as close to L as I want it to, then I have a limit. Okay. Let's add just a little bit more precision to that. What we're really saying is if by getting x far enough away from the origin, f of x gets as close to L as I want it to be, then we will say that the limit exists and the limit is L. In fact, the converse is also true. Namely, if the limit exists and it is L, then it guarantees that getting x far enough away from the origin means that f of x gets as close to L as I want. So we actually write this as if and only if. Then is this true? Now, in the next video, we're going to work with this definition through several examples. So you'll get more comfortable with it. But just a little bit for fun, I want to show you how this verbal definition is actually rendered in formal logic. Now, I should caution you right at the beginning, there is no need for any of you to understand what I'm about to write at this stage of your study of calculus, or for that matter, any time this year. But I just thought that some of you might enjoy seeing how these verbal definitions are translated into even more precise, logical, symbolic definitions. And what we say is, for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that getting x bigger than 1 over delta guarantees that the distance between f of x and L is less than epsilon. If you can do that, then we say that the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x is L. And that in fact works in both directions. And so we draw the symbol like this. And to state it another way, if you can't achieve this condition, the limit does not exist. So again, no one needs to panic if this looks like gibberish or if this looks like Greek. Well, it is Greek because it has a lot of Greek symbols in it. But this is simply the logical notation, the symbolic notation that we use 
to say this in words. And that is the truly precise definition of limit.